Well, let's go now back to the situation in Italy. In a moment, we'll be speaking to Greg Foster, who's originally from Manchester, but who now owns an English language school in Matera in the south of Italy. And I'll also be joined by Amy Ingle, who just got back from Milan and has self-isolated following advice from NHS 111. She will join us from Castleford. But first, Greg sent this video into BBC News of his dog walk to show us the impact of the lockdown. So this is a this is a main street in the Sassi of Matera and usually even around March time usually this is a street that's pretty full of tourists and as you can see it's completely dead here I mean there's just a local guy over there but there's really there's just really no one here at all um, and you can just see here one of the local bars here this is usually a place that's open by now closed um, it's very strange to see the sassy like this. This is a sign I keep seeing uh, cropping up all over town, possibly across the whole country. It's basically the, um, if I just get a, a better shot of it there, there we go, tutto andra bene, which basically means, I guess it's the Italian equivalent of keep calm and carry on. And squares like this, just completely empty. This is a beautiful church here that's usually full of visitors. And this rock church at the top as well. Super ancient, beautiful place. Actually, the set of the, part of the set of the new James Bond film. Um, completely empty. And Greg and Amy join me now. Greg, those are extraordinary scenes. What did it feel like walking around there? Well, it's like a ghost town here, actually. It's, uh, it's very, very unnerving to see Matera like this. Um, and, you know, I said in, um, in the video I sent to you guys that last year this city was actually the European capital of culture and uh, it was a very busy year for Matera. Um, and usually by this point, the tourists are, are flocking in. Uh, this is a kind of a new, a new place on the tourist map of Italy. Uh, but right now, as you can see, there's no one here. And, uh, you know, um, here right in the Sassi of Matera, it's, it's just like a ghost town. There's nobody. You know, it's very strange. It's very, very eerie. It must be. And do you feel that the advice that you're getting about how you should conduct yourself, what you should do, do you think that's been clear? Absolutely, yeah. From this morning, the rules have been very, very clear here. The government have made it very, very clear what we can do and what we can't do. Um, so the sort of rules we have to follow, for example, we... First thing, we can't leave our towns, our local kind of uh, districts, if you like, unless we have a permission for work or we have a medical emergency of some sort with a family member. Um, we can go shopping, we can go to supermarkets, but we're only, only one person from a family is allowed to go in. Uh, they're being quite strict with that in the supermarkets. We're, we're not allowed to uh, form big groups on the streets or even inside. People have already been fined for doing that this morning, I understand, here in Matera. Um, so, you know, the, the rules are very, very clear. Um, there's a huge campaign going on here in Italy as well with the equivalent of the BBC here, the, the RAI, um, the stay at home campaign where you see local or national celebrities making lots of selfie videos from home uh, and basically encouraging people, you know, stay at home, uh, we'll get through this together. Um, so there's a real campaign here and people are responding. There's a real sense of unity. And, uh, you know, as I say, the rules have been very clear from this morning and uh, we have to follow them now. We have to get through this. Yeah, really interesting. Um, Amy Ingle, now you're talking to us from Castleford. You came back from Italy yesterday. You came back from Milan and you've chosen to self-isolate um, following advice from uh, NHS 111. I'll get to that in a moment. But just tell us about your, your journey back from Italy because the plane was um, very empty, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So, to be honest, getting to the airport wasn't much different to if Italy wasn't in self-isolation. So we used public transport and the shuttle bus exactly like we would any other day. It wasn't really what I would have described a lockdown. Um, but yeah, it was weird being in the airport and it being so empty. And obviously getting on the plane, it was really empty. Um, but I was surprised at the lack of information that we got on the plane and in the airport and also upon arriving back in Manchester as well. We were met by nobody at the gate. We went temperature check. Um, and that really surprised me. I think more should have been done there. So you went back home, you rang the NHS 111 helpline as you're told to do, and they told you to self-isolate, but they gave your mum different advice. 
Yeah, that's right. So I called NHS 111 on Monday morning um, after the guidance was updated. They told me to stay home. Um, my mum works in a school um, and obviously there's vulnerable people who um, go to schools and things like that. Um, so she also rang NHS 111. However, she was told that I shouldn't be self-isolating and she shouldn't be self-isolating after being in contact with me um, and that all we needed to do was up our hand hygiene. How do you feel about that? I think it's it's not very... Um, it doesn't give you much confidence in the NHS or the government when you've been giving contradictory advice like that. Um, yeah, I think especially in a time like this when there is so much uncertainty on social media and from different news outlets and people are really unsure about what's going on. Uh, Greg, you're in Italy, so you're in a country that is uh, several weeks further on in this outbreak uh, from where we are in the UK. Um, do you, are you seeing Italian people understanding what's going on and to a certain extent metaphorically coming together, although, of course, then very discouraged from <laughs> forming large groups? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously people are scared here. Uh, I think everyone's scared across Europe with this. But I think it's, uh, you know, I definitely get a sense of unity here. Um, you certainly see that on the, as I say, on the equivalent of the BBC, the Rye here. There, there's definitely a clear message about that. I think the Prime Minister here has been incredibly clear about what is required to get through this. Um, you know, he's definitely using the sort of language that will bring people together. He's making sure that people look after their family members, particularly their grandparents, who are obviously most at risk. Um, and, uh, you know, it's... Um, you know, there's a real sense uh, of people coming together to get through this, I think. Uh, and obviously, as well, there's, there's government packages now to help people through, like people like myself who have uh, businesses. You know, that was a big concern for the last uh, few days, of course. You know, what are we going to do if we can't work? Um, and they've announced a whole range of measures today uh, covering things like waiving local taxes, you know, uh, freezing utility bills, things like this, um, and all sorts of things that basically are going to help people get through this. So, yeah, I mean, I get a sense from the people here that they're very resilient um, and they're going to get through this. You know, there's a, there's a real positivity to get through this, even though it's difficult, of course. Mm, you know, mm. um, you know I would just say to everyone, just to finish, I would just say that please don't underestimate this back home in England. You know, um, you guys, I think, are where we were two weeks ago here. It's very, very quickly changed. Um, so, you know, please, uh, nobody should be underestimating the effect this is going to have um, <laughs> on everyone's lives, really, you know, so and businesses as well, of course. So. OK, OK, we hear you. And Amy, you've just started your self-isolation. Just just tell people, what's it like? What, what sort of contact can you have? Are you seeing anybody? Are people bringing you food? What about medication? Yeah, people have been bringing me food to my room, um, so that's been OK. Um, I don't really think the cabin fever's set in yet, because obviously I'm only on day two, um, but I am working from home at the moment, so I'm keeping nice and busy. Um, and, yeah, hopefully it shouldn't be too bad over the next two weeks. It can't really be helped. Um, and I'd rather be self-isolated than obviously putting others at risk, especially more vulnerable people than myself. OK. Well, we wish you well, both of you. Uh, thank you both very much for talking to us here on BBC News. That's uh, Amy Ingle and Greg Foster. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.